we visualized this and we said, if you want this, give us your email. Um, and yeah, basically, once you give us your email, you're put in a queue to get access to Hodger. And then if you referred friends um, to join the queue, you'd move higher up on the list, which means you get access uh, quicker. Um, and we also did incentivization, um, such as um, the first 20 would get a free lifetime account, top 200 we get a t-shirt. If you referred uh, five people, you get six months free of Hotjar. And this was extremely effective, right? So a lot of this was actually learned from the previous project that we had failed with. We had built a tool for retail and hospitality businesses to kind of improve uh, loyalty um, from their customers, so to get them to come back by, by incentivizing them. And while we did fail to get traction, we learned a lot about human behavior. So for example, we discovered that um, if you want to get people really engaged and, and participate in a program, ideally you need to, to have two dimensions. One dimension is for what we call the competitors. So uh, some people love to compete. They want to be first, second, and that's why we gave the lifetime accounts to the top 20 and then 200 t-shirts, right? So there's that competitive nature. But then there's another type of, uh, um, let's say, persona, which is the people that don't like to compete and they want a fixed, um, let's say, prize. So that's where we did stuff like if you recruit uh, five, if you refer five friends, then you get a fixed prize, right? So you, you don't necessarily need to compete. By having those two kind of ways of incentivizing, we, we, we hit a very broad uh, um, amount of people. Now, we, I, I get a lot of people asking us, so, oh yeah, we're, we wanna do this as well, right? But nothing takes away from the core fact that we were fixing a pain that many other people had, right? So it, it, it works to give t-shirts and to do lifetime and have these kind of c competing and, and the waiting list. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is, is to have that, that core pain. So many people having that pain and, and there's demand for what, what, what you're building, the solution you're building. All right. So um, just to, I suppose, give a bit of background as well to, to this story, uh, do you want to share with everyone what you actually achieved from it? Because I think um, I didn't realize how many people actually got signed up until um, we, we had this conversation uh, before we started. Sure. So with this program that we talked about of, of collecting emails and, and um, yeah, and, and people basically referring and moving up in the list, we ended up with 60,000 emails over a span of around three to four months, uh, which, which for us was, was in, back then that was, it was incredibly successful. Of those 60,000, uh, around 20,000 signed up to the tool. So always keep in mind that there is always a, like, email open rates there is people actually having the time to actually use the tool so 60,000 was a good number when you see how that then dropped down right but what was interesting is when that we exited the beta we had thousands of people who were following what we were going through and, and what we were doing so we 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 did a lot of announcements and, and updates and informed people of what we were doing so that then when we came out of beta we realized there were thousands of people who were just waiting for the beta to end because they were maybe a little bit concerned about using a beta tool. And then they'd seen the journey uh, and they wanted to join in as well. So more importantly than the 60,000 email thing and whatnot, um, I'd say there's two big takeaways, which is one, we very quickly, rapidly um, uh, realized that there was a pain in the market and that there was an addressable market. But more importantly, two, um, which is the name of the phase we gave this back then is we built a sustainable fan base. So we built a group of people that really loved Hodjar, were part of the journey, they loved what we were doing, we explained why we're doing it, our vision. Uh, and yeah, they were the catalyst for then spreading the word and actually being profitable within one month of exiting the beta. I mean, yeah, if, if you look at it that way, that's, that's huge, right? Like you've, you, you've been working on something for a while and, uh, you know, something that might take a long time before you've got um, a product ready to take to market. But to identify that there's, there's a need or a want or an interest from the market um, that people are willing to give you their email address so that you've got 60,000 potential leads before you even launch, um, you know, that's, that's really 
um, powerful stuff. And, and, you know, it obviously, you know, you had thousands of, of um, you know, customers uh, when you launched too, which uh, sounds like it's, uh, it, it definitely worked for you too. So um, this was a strategy you used to start generating leads um, into your business um, through this competition, if you like, um, so that it was working on, on autopilot almost uh, to bring in these leads whilst you were working on the product. Exactly. And that's where the automation piece comes in, right? Well, some people might be saying, okay, so where's the automation? So here's where, where the automation was. Essentially, we built a very simple internal database. Uh, and the idea is, obviously, the automation aspect, first and foremost, comes from the fact of, of the spread, the word, the, the word of mouth, right? So um, what we did was, as soon as someone puts in their email, we pretty much instantly send out an email um, saying, welcome to um, this, this community, this vision. Here's why we have a waiting list. We very quickly learned that there was a lot of people saying, hold on, well, why, why the hell is there a waiting list? I don't want to be on a waiting list. We explained, right? We're building technology. We have huge demand. Um, and we need to bring in people slowly so that we can learn what the mistakes are and iteratively improve. And some people waited for months. Right, but it was part of us building something that we really truly believed in and something that we could really improve over time. So again, really important, very instantly giving a reason why and then explaining why we needed their help. We're bootstrapped, we don't have investors, which means we're gonna build something for you. There's not gonna be investors breathing down our neck telling us how to change the product or to put prices up. So we need your help in order to achieve this. And this message resonated. Uh, so then from there, we'd point them to their own personal page from where they would have their own URL and they had buttons which automated the, the sharing for them. And then as soon as someone, and this is the important part, the gamification aspect, right? Very simple gamification. But as soon as someone signs up using their, their, their URL and they got a referral, we'd then fire off an email and we'd say, hey, wow, well done. You actually signed up someone already. Um, and by the way, here's your position, but if you sign up for more, you get the fixed prize. But hey, why not go all the way and try and win the lifetime account, right? So we're appealing to those two type of users. And then based on the speed at which they were going up, we'd then tailor the messaging. So if they reached five, we'd actually tell them about the t-shirt that they're going to get. Um, we tell them about the six months they're going to get for free, get them excited. Um, so there was a lot of automation in the messaging and how we kind of bucketed people there. Then what happened was that um, another thing we did was we, we planned out the process of which we were inviting people, right? Um, so we started off maybe inviting 10 people. That was, that was an interesting day, right? The excitement of that. And then 100 and then 1,000 and then moving to 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. So constantly inviting more and more people. And we, we had to automate the process of collecting feedback there. So essentially what we did was we had a structure whereby when someone came in, and they use the feature, we would time it so that we would ask a message asking them for feedback as soon as they've used the tool. 